السلام علیکم خواتین و حضرات آئی ویلکم یو ٹو دا ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان ود دا ڈسکشن آن نگ دا برانڈ ایکسٹینشن دیٹ بین ٹیکنگ پلیس فار دا پریویس ٹو اور تھری لیکچرس وی آر ناؤ گیٹنگ ان ٹو لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی فور اسٹل ڈسکسنگ دا سیم کانسیپٹ فار اور انڈرسٹینڈنگ وٹ وی ڈسکسڈ ان دا پریویس لیکچر واز دیٹ دیر آر سرٹن پازیٹیو سائڈس آف دا برانڈ ایکسٹینشن لائک Brand extension provides uh, the brands with an opportunity to stay up to date and modern. Brand extension uh, offers the chances of success, meaning higher chances of success. Uh, the brand extension uh, offers opportunities uh, to ailing brands of, of uh, survival. The brand extension um, defines new segments and new boundaries. Uh, it um, provides the brand with uh, an opportunity to have access to uh, image capital, which has been building over uh, the last so many years or decades, and uh, it is good for the survival of brands. Now, this is what we discussed about the brand extension, and before we uh, culminated uh, this discussion in the previous lecture uh, on the positive side of brand extension, we were discussing things uh, which are good for uh, Uh, stretching the line, the meaning line extension. Now, after having talked about um, all the positive sides of uh, line extension and brand extension, the conclusion should not be drawn that uh, it is always essential or it is always good to get into line extensions or brand extensions uh, whenever we are to introduce new brands. Uh, this does not and should not uh, preclude the uh, possibility of uh, the getting into new brands, the meaning standalone brands. Uh, standalone brands offers us the opportunity of uh, the better the market coverage, um, or I would say they offer us with um, an opportunity to maximize uh, the market coverage. And therefore, we should not forget the usefulness of uh, getting into new brands. Line extension or brand extension, whenever they have a fit with the overall st strategic situation of the company, it is always good to get into extensions, but it is not the rule that we must always get into line or brand extensions. Uh, while new brands come into being given a certain rationale, the existing ones uh, that must not be uh, stretched or um, extended unnecessarily. There have to be certain strategic considerations before we get into extensions. Let us now uh, move toward actual extension. Uh, we have um, had um, quite a bit of understanding by now uh, what a line extension is and uh, what a brand extension is. We haven't yet talked about how to actually uh, extend the brand. To extend of a brand, We have to go back to the concept of uh, the positioning that we learned uh, a couple of lectures ago. If you recall that concept, you know that uh, the positioning statement has basically three components. The one relates the target market, the other relates the, the overall business within which the brand operates, and uh, the third one talks about the point of difference. Whatever extension that we may be considering has to stem uh, from either one of the components or a combination of uh, the three components of the positioning statement. Which means that uh, we can extend the brand by the target market or we can extend the brand by defining the overall business within which the brand is operating or we can extend the brand by defining the point of difference. So this, uh, in a way, provides us with uh, a summary of all the factors that we've been discussing so far in terms of going for real extension. But we have been talking, I will repeat, we have been talking about uh, all the positive sides. We also had a chance to talk about a few negative sides of line extension. But basically, we've been trying to understand the difference between line extension and uh, the brand extension and uh, the factors which really help in the favor of extensions. Uh, the meaning, the, what is it that really makes extendability a, a, a promising uh, a opportunity, a, a full of potential? That's what we've been talking about. And now we are talking as to how to go for that extendability in real terms. So the first one is extending your target market. 
here the extension is all about okay, the defining okay, your uh, new segment in which you're going to offer okay, your uh, differentiated okay, features of the same okay, the basic product. Uh, but then you're going to have um, a different product altogether. Uh, well, I shouldn't say altogether. A different product with, um, with, with added features. Now, this can be explained okay, with the help of an example uh, of uh, a bicycle manufacturer okay, who's planning to get into manufacturing mountain bikes. It is a very different segment that we are talking about. We may have overlaps of uh, the customers, like a customer who is using an ordinary bike uh, for the purpose of transportation may like to get into that segment also, uh, but uh, basically it is going to be a different segment and uh, this is what uh, the line extension is uh, doing. It is uh, pushing the boundaries, it is taking the company into a new segment which addresses the very different needs and uh, those needs relate to uh, the fun and uh, the hobby and all that. That is not the need of uh, the basic transportation uh, which somebody else um, fulfills uh, while going to uh, one's office or commuting. It is a very different need. Uh, another example could be from um, the area of uh, clothing. Uh, this is like uh, a manufacturer uh, of uh, the blue jeans that are getting into um, comfortable uh, clothing, uh, meaning comfortable formal clothing. Now, whether the company succeeds or not is a separate issue, but uh, the market or the target market is uh, being extended by defining a new segment, which is an extension of uh, where the company has been operating before. So this is uh, what uh, is meant by extending the market or extending the brand in terms of uh, extending the target market. The, uh, the other um, uh, the component that uh, we talked about is uh, extending the brand uh, in terms of uh, the defining your overall business. Now this is uh, the different from uh, defining your uh, the segment because segment a is dealing with uh, a regular uh, the basic bicycle. Segment B is uh, the basically the dealing with uh, a mountain bike, uh, which is all about exercise, fun, and uh, uh, hobbing and all that. So we are talking about two different segments, but nevertheless, when we uh, take a look at those two segments uh, at the same time, uh, we realize that uh, the overall business uh, has different boundaries and uh, the overall business uh, has now got to be defined. The definition of the overall business uh, when it comes to strategic planning or uh, strategic management process uh, takes on very different dimensions uh, because uh, you're talking about a very different bag of variables, uh, not only in terms of uh, um, the marketing mix, but also the other management areas, including uh, the financial one. So uh, defining the overall business is uh, different from defining the uh, segment, uh, but having an understanding of uh, how could we cross uh, one segment and get into the other uh, does explain to a large extent, uh, or rather to a great extent, uh, a definition of uh, the overall business, which has now taken a different and a new shape altogether. So in other words, we just cannot talk about uh, extension uh, of a brand um, in relation to the defining the overall market without having to take into account um, the target market, meaning the segment. Uh, we have to take into account one segment, the other segment, and yet another if we are moving to that as well. So this is what is meant by extending the by definition uh, of the market, meaning extension by redefining the overall business, we can say in those terms. The next one is um, uh, extending by the point of preference. Uh, just look at uh, yogurt. The manufacturers could keep uh, defining uh, the points of difference with uh, gradual with the passage of time. We have a regular uh, package of yogurt. And then we have um, a package of yogurt, which has a different flavor. Uh, it may be fruit yogurt. And then you know, we have something else, which is enriched with some kind of vitamin, good for certain parts of the body. 
we have brands that are talking about uh, with calcium and rest and so on and so forth. So these are the points of difference which uh, manufacturers take into account while they consider extendability. So naturally, when you are extending your brand in terms of the flavor or in terms of a different taste or in terms of a different package, a different size, you are extending the brand and the improvement that has taken place takes you into the area of brand extension. The point of difference naturally relates to the benefits that you have added to the product, meaning the point of difference which you are offering to your customers that becomes the basis of your extension. Uh, just to give you another example of uh, this kind of a scenario, uh, look at uh, the manufacturer of uh, the computer chip. Every time the, the manufacturer uh, adds certain more benefits, uh, the manufacturer defines the point of difference and uh, starts selling the new or the newer um, generation of chips uh, by uh, that definition. So that is uh, what is meant by extending the brand uh, by the point of difference. So in other words, we can very comfortably conclude that uh, the positioning uh, lays the foundation for uh, brand extension. And let me also get the point out at this very moment before I go uh, further that um, the extensions that I've been talking about uh, so far, uh, the meaning in this lecture, extending your brand by taking into account three different components of uh, the positioning concept or the positioning statement relate to uh, line extensions. Because we are talking about those differences which uh, are taking place uh, with uh, the same uh, the base product, may that be yogurt, may that be a computer chip, uh, or may that be a bicycle. Uh, so we are addressing uh, the uh, the area of uh, what you may call line extension. How do we get into extensions when it uh, comes to extending the brand? Well, this is a subtle uh, differentiation here in terms of the concept that I would like to uh, get a pinpoint uh, in very explicit terms. Uh, you get into the brand extension by changing the overall positioning. The reason is very obvious. We are getting into new market, a new field, a new area altogether, which means that we have to go by that positioning map and we have to define the overall business in which we are planning to move into and we have to talk about all the dynamics of the competition of that particular area. And therefore, we say that we extend the brand by changing the overall position. I think it goes without saying that uh, when a manufacturer of dairy uh, products and uh, other food items uh, gets into uh, something relating uh, automotive parts, for example, uh, he is um, or she is uh, getting into a different market altogether. Uh, however, uh, there are uh, the certain uh, bases and uh, there are um, uh, that are certain uh, strategic considerations uh, which are to be uh, studied uh, very carefully uh, before uh, we get into areas or territories uh, unknown to us. Venturing into those territories requires a lot more study and analysis of the situation uh, which is going to take us uh, from here to there. And if we are clear about the brand vision, if we are clear about uh, how to uh, going to fill the, the overall gap, meaning to what extent we are going to strengthen the existing offerings and to what extent we are going to venture into new areas uh, by defining the new categories and uh, by defining the dynamics of those of the new uh, territories, uh, we are taking a step in the right direction. And there are uh, the many examples in the marketplace, the meaning of our own market. Um, in which uh, the people have uh, moved from one area to another uh, which doesn't really have any relationship in terms of uh, the production synergies or even marketing synergies, uh, meaning that you need to have a very different production setup uh, for that uh, the category in which you are uh, venturing into. You need to have um, a different kind of marketing team 
and you need to have a different sales team. Uh, you may not uh, going to have a completely different marketing team, but um, you know, we've got one or two good brand managers could here and there, but certainly a new sales team because you're dealing with a new market altogether. It is risky, it is um, costly, and it requires a lot more kind of effort and energy. But if the companies can have done their homework very carefully, then the chances are. Uh, they are stepping into the right direction and um, then it is it is a matter of uh, the deploying the amount of resources with which uh, that must be deployed in order to make that venture successful. The important point that we have to keep in mind here is that when we are getting into a new market altogether, uh, we add to the image capital, meaning we are getting in there because we have access to the image capital which we have built over a long period of time. But then at the same time, with the new entry, the meaning with the new area of operations, we must see to it that we add value to the brand and we add value to the company and not diminish that. If getting into the new area is going to mean compromising your existing image capital, uh, translating into lower the financial values can all the way down to you know the bottom line and then uh, the share value and so on and so forth then we are not uh, the moving into the right direction and uh, if that happens you have to go for a quick fix uh, which could take so many different forms and shapes it is not uh, the topic of uh, discussion at the moment but uh, the objective is that you see to it, I mean the company sees to it, that it is moving in a direction which is going to take the company to the envisioned objective. And on the way, the brand accumulates more value and higher image. So brand extension or diversification, so to say, uh, must uh, give the brand strength and enhance the overall picture which uh, people uh, or customers in the marketplace have about your brand. This uh, the concept that we have talked about, meaning uh, how to get into real extension in relation to line extension uh, and in relation to brand extension, I would like to summarize that with the help of uh, a graphic illustration which makes the understanding uh, very clear. I'm using uh, the similar kind of uh, grid which uh, I used for explaining the positioning concept. And as you can see the, from the four quadrants, uh, three are in red color uh, and the fourth one is in blue. Uh, the reason three are in red color is because uh, these three belong to the three components of uh, the positioning statement. Uh, extending the market by which uh, basically falls into the realm of line extension. Uh, we are talking about uh, extending the target market, we are talking about extending a definition of business, and we are talking about extending a point of difference. Uh, so in other words, if you uh, move um, from um, left uh, downwards and then toward your right, you see all these um, the red quadrants you know, explaining the extension with the byway of uh, the three components of uh, the positioning statement. Um, if you go upwards, you on the right hand side, you see that the blue quadrant, which is talking about extending the overall positioning, and this relates to the brand extension. Whenever we talk about um, uh, extensions, uh, we may talk a little um, loosely uh, just in order to enhance uh, your understanding of the concepts so that uh, there are no mistakes on your part when you enter the practical field. I'm trying to explain all these uh, the very, um, in a very detailed manner, uh, but the fact is that uh, an extension is an extension and um, whatever uh, shape it is going to take, it is going to take that shape in relation to uh, going for a new offering, going for a new introduction, and uh, you are dealing with a segment, you're dealing with the market, and uh, once you have uh, all these concepts clear in your mind, you're going to be very accurate in deciding which situation fits 
where sort of what kind of a concept or what um, you know sub concept of an overall concept so to say having said that I would assume that your understanding about uh, how we extend the brand uh, is complete whether in terms of line or brand whatever it is your understanding should be complete by now let us now uh, take a look at uh, when should we uh, extend the brand how we extend the brand we are clear about that when the timing and uh, when is the situation ripe that uh, we start uh, uh, considering uh, line extensions or uh, brand extensions uh, I would like to uh, talk about um, one uh, fact uh, which is that uh, the brand extension in particular uh, is something very sensitive and very strategic not to say that line extensions are uh, less strategic or less sensitive but uh, moving into a different area altogether that takes on some added proportions so you've got to be very very careful with when to go for extendability so in other words you've got to have a complete and a very um, solid rationale for the getting into extensions whether those are line extensions or brand extensions um, the extension it must be undertaken to add strength and value to the brand and not diminish uh, the value that like uh, that I uh, said earlier uh, strategic uh, deliberations uh, relating uh, uh, extensions uh, should be uh, undertaken and uh, there are uh, different factors which we must consider before we go for um, these extensions um, and um, these uh, the factors could call for uh, the consistencies uh, the one is in the area of uh, the brand vision the other is uh, in the area of uh, the brand picture and the third one relates to overall positioning so whether it is uh, uh, line extension or brand extension these uh, deliberations are going to have to be undertaken uh, very assiduously and very diligently because uh, the one mistake uh, is going to cost you a lot of money and time and let us make sure that uh, we are extremely clear before we get to put our steps into the water let us now talk about uh, what consistency with uh, the brand vision is going back to the brand vision and and before that the company vision that we are very clear that uh, a company vision translates into brand vision and the brand vision either translates into all the strategies and objectives and uh, the while we created you know that vision uh, the we uh, knew what are the related and the unrelated areas that the brand may like to get into now related areas are those which uh, are very closely related to the existing brand and which in a way means we know that we have to go for line extensions and unrelated areas are uh, the ones which uh, are going to take care of um, new businesses and that also is something which uh, we were clear about while we were creating the overall business vision and uh, that led to the, the brand vision so in other words we are clear about whether we are going to get into related areas or we're going to get into unrelated areas the meaning line extensions or brand extensions and there's nothing you know, which is going to come as a surprise or as a shock uh, all those things are uh, the ones that we uh, did uh, to consider and um, took into uh, the consideration while we were talking about the vision so consistency with uh, the brand vision is uh, one of the uh, fundamentals that uh, we have to um, consider so in other words uh, in light of uh, the overall business vision and the brand vision we know whether we are going to get into the related areas or unrelated areas meaning whether we're going to get into line extensions or brand extensions and then uh, deliberate uh, dynamics relating to uh, different situations the point which I really want to make here is that uh, it is very hard to go wrong if you had the right vision because the right vision led you to the right brand vision and the right brand vision led you to creating the right picture and the contract and then the product the promises and so on and so forth so it will take you with a lot of uh, effort to go wrong here 
if you know what I'm saying, the chances are you will go right and uh, your uh, vision uh, is going to be consistent with uh, the extension that uh, you create here at this juncture. Uh, to give you one example of how vision you know, can be related to uh, your actions uh, when it comes to extending the brand, uh, let's go back to the example of uh, the brand XYZ you know, of uh, the fast foods. Now, if uh, the brand vision uh, restricts the brand uh, to the lunch market only, then um, the extension is going to take place in a very uh, the minor way, uh, but of course in a meaningful way, uh, into the segments uh, which are uh, the right and left of uh, the target segment, uh, number four, uh, where we started doing business. If the vision of the business is to make uh, the brand XYZ uh, a huge brand and um, turn it into uh, the circle of uh, the, the, the winners, then we've got to do something more than uh, just restricting it to the lunch market. Then I think you know, that we've got to do something in order to be uh, in the market of uh, all the times, meaning dinner, lunch, in between, and maybe also breakfast at one time, somewhere down the line. Now, if that is the vision, then uh, the lunch market is just about the point of departure because you are taking a start from there and uh, you have uh, you know, a couple of or a few entries uh, catering to the needs in uh, the one particular segment. But when you get into restaurants, for example, because, uh, we are, because you are uh, extending the uh, target segment, you are extending the overall business, and you are defining those two things uh, by the uh, fundamental components of uh, the positioning statement, then your extension is going to take a different shape and form. And uh, I think it goes without saying, it becomes very obvious uh, the kind of extensions that you should go for at that time. Uh, maybe you would like to go for fried chicken, the kind of items which you are not uh, selling at uh, the time of uh, introducing the brand. You would like to make your base, then consolidate that, and then get into uh, strengthening the brand by way of uh, uh, extending uh, the definition of the target market, by way of extending the definition of business, and by way of extending the point of difference. And I think the example should suffice uh, the, what I'm trying to uh, the, put across to you people. The second example to illustrate uh, the, this uh, consistency with uh, the brand vision would be in the area of uh, razor blades. If I look at a company which is uh, defining its business um, in terms of uh, razor blades, the meaning just about shaving and that's all. And uh, they have uh, the one particular brand. They may have a few variations in terms of uh, different qualities of uh, the blades. But look at the vision of the brand if it says that we have to reach a destination which is uh, going to um, be a function of uh, there are so many different factors. Uh, strengthening the brand being one, introducing uh, something new which is uh, meant for the same customer but which is uh, away from the blades, then um, that, is, uh, that amounts to being another. Uh, the manufacturer of razor blades who defined you know, his market or her market uh, by way of uh, the blades is now defining his market uh, by getting into an area which he may term as personal care uh, the category or personal care area in which he would like to introduce alongside with blades like in a shaving balm, I mean a shaving cream, uh, soothing balm, uh, deodorants, and so on and so forth. And uh, this example, uh, once again, uh, explains in um, depth the concept of extendability. Uh, what kind of extendability you should go for, meaning at, at, at what time, because we are talking about when we should get into extendability. Um, and uh, this is uh, uh, an appropriate time uh, when the company is all set to get into uh, areas which uh, are going to bring the company 
added business uh, with the help of uh, a renewed definition of segments and also overall business. Okay, having said that, um, let us now uh, try to keep uh, the one factor in mind that uh, it is the level of growth that we have envisaged. It is the increment of growth that we envisage that must come our way. If we want growth to take place in small increments, then you may go for line extensions. If you are looking for something dramatic and the growth gap is huge, which you nevertheless think um, and envision that you can fail, then you go for the brand extensions and you go into areas which are maybe far apart from what you're doing right now. So this summarizes uh, the once again the concept in uh, clarity the, when we should get into extensions of two different kinds, a line extension and brand extension. The second deliberation that uh, we may talk about um, uh, maintaining uh, the second uh, deliberation necessitates that uh, we maintain a consistency with uh, the brand picture, the meaning we uphold the brand picture. How do we do that? Uh, it again is very obvious if uh, we have uh, the right picture in place uh, because while we created the picture, uh, we were very mindful of uh, the image of a brand uh, that carries and uh, we also were uh, very mindful of uh, the promises uh, which uh, the brand fulfills and the contract it has in place in order to satisfy its customers. So all the factors which form the overall brand picture, we created that and I mean with the help of those factors and if we have the right brand picture in place, the chances are the extendability is going to be full of sense. It again will take you a lot of effort to go wrong, with the meaning it's very difficult to go wrong if you have the brand picture. Uh, but the point here is that uh, we must uphold that picture so that uh, we can uh, position the brand, um, the new extension meaning, uh, the line or brand, whatever it is, uh, is, is fully according to the picture that we created. And the, the picture gets uh, upheld. Another uh, deliberation is that uh, extension has to be very consistent with the overall position. The price, the target market, the distribution factor, and uh, the quality factor but all must form a position to which offers the brand possibilities of extension. So in other words, if we have created a position which is just about the right position, it is going to provide us with um, opportunities and possibilities to go for extensions. You will recall that we talked about uh, the, the position being such that uh, it offers uh, the opportunity of uh, the shifting it if we really have to, or um, we can go for another positioning because the one positioning just cannot satisfy all the needs. And uh, also recalling that uh, the brand offers so many different benefits uh, from so many different um, angles, uh, that we can uh, talk about uh, the one positioning in relation to the one brand and we can talk about another positioning in relation to another brand. And that is the, the, beautiful, that, that's the beauty of the limitation of uh, the positioning concept in a way that it keeps you the focused on one particular position and in order to create another position which is closely related or it is which is related, may not be very closely related, you go for another brand and that offers you the, the possibility of extendability. That is how, and that is when that you extend your brand. Any abuse of uh, the one factor or a combination of uh, uh, the ones that I talked about in relation to positioning, meaning quality, the price, distribution, and the target market is going to uh, hamper your progress or they may be uh, going to make uh, totally uh, impossible the task of uh, the extension you have to have all those factors uh, in place. And that is what an accurate position is all about. To make sure that um, the consistency between overall positioning 
and uh, the brand extensions are um, very much in place, uh, we can uh, look at uh, a couple of factors. And those are whether our uh, core customers are detracted from uh, the, the parent brand. If uh, we feel that uh, the core customers or even the prospects are going to be uh, detracted from the parent brand, then there is something wrong with uh, the new positioning, meaning there is something wrong with the extension which we are uh, contemplating. So in other words, uh, the, this question has got to be answered in affirmative. That is, uh, there is no possibility of uh, the prospects or existing customers getting detracted you know, with uh, the extension in place. After having talked about uh, these uh, strategic uh, deliberations, I would now like to talk about a few more factors with which you must have uh, a very good understanding of uh, relating to uh, the brand extensions. One is that uh, the managers uh, at times tend to have a very narrow vision of the brand. So this is something that uh, has to be uh, looked into in uh, the very qualitative and at the same time real hard business terms. And uh, I'm going to explain this with the help of an example which I will be talking later. Uh, but the fact is that uh, the managers keep the potential of their brand locked up. Uh, why they do that? Because they think that uh, the brand has become too old and it doesn't really have uh, any further potential to grow and therefore any new introductions uh, by way of extensions uh, have to come our way uh, by uh, the way of introducing new brands, meaning standalone brands, and meaning uh, by creating a portfolio of different brands. That is something I'm going to talk about later, but for the time being, uh, about the uh, locking up of uh, the potential, only thinking that the brand is aging and therefore it may not have any further appeal for the market is something that only the managers may think. There is a strong possibility that the market is not thinking that way. The one factor of which we must keep in our minds is, and I keep repeating that again and again, brands go by the process of evolution because they want to satisfy evolving needs and while they do that they take on a very caring character. If we believe in this thing that brands do take on a caring character then I think that we should let the brands do the job to which they are doing of caring about the customers and uh, about uh, the being very friendly and uh, about being uh, very responsive. So in other words, what I'm saying is, if we do not allow our brands to stay responsive and to stay friendly and caring, uh, the brands uh, definitely are going to go down the history of marketing as the ones which were killed only because the managers thought that they were not worth their existence. Still, in other words, what I'm saying is that the, the potential of the brands has got to be hard nest. It's got to be get a further uh, nurtured get a by way of uh, get a introducing new extensions. And get a, those extensions are the ones get a, which are going to satisfy the needs which still are unmet in the marketplace. And uh, get a, when we do that, we are making our brands modern. We are making our brands up to date because they're responding to needs. And when they respond to needs, get a, they have to be contemporary and up to date. To give you one example, which uh, I indicated earlier, um, at a huge the multinational in um, the Western markets, in one of the Western markets, uh, the managers at the headquarters thought that uh, one of the brands, uh, which is in the soups and um, those kind of related items, had grown very old, and uh, the new introductions to which uh, they were contemplating uh, had to be um, very different and they had to be launched in a way that customers could not uh, think of the old brand uh, because that might uh, cast some negative uh, images over uh, the new offerings. So in other words, they tried to maintain such a tremendous uh, gulf uh, between uh, the brand which they thought was old and the new offerings uh, which they wanted to bring into the market uh, by new names that um, 
the old brand uh, really got in a way killed. And uh, when they launched the new entries, uh, they realized that uh, they, they were not in a position to be as successful as they really wanted to be. And probably uh, the market research or uh, their analysis of the situation uh, proved later on that uh, had they continued with uh, the brand which they had thought had grown old, um, they would have been better off. So in other words, they did not really give the brand an opportunity to unlock its potential and to bloom in response to the changing needs of the market and hence it was deprived of the possibility of uh, extensions. The meaning the brand just could not could it subdivide itself uh, into the further subspecies in relation to those offerings with which the managers were considering at that particular point in time. So this is uh, the, what is meant by not having a narrow uh, the vision of uh, the brand uh, because brands are the very broad-minded creatures and uh, that broad-mindedness is uh, fairly manifested uh, by way of uh, their responding to our changing needs. Still, in other words, managers they must not be too much focused on the past. I mean, there is no question about one fact that uh, it is the, the past practices and the history which guides us uh, into the future because we know what is happening at the present. But here, you know, is a situation in which the managers might get too much focused onto the past in too narrow a way that they lose perspective of the present and therefore may lose direction for where they really want to reach, meaning the destination. So managers have got to have a broader vision uh, of the brand because the brands themselves are very broad-minded creatures. In other words, the, the present must be given importance to determine brands' the potential to stay up to date. It is only because of that importance that we give to brands that brands enter um, the future with a lot of uh, energy and zeal. One example which I may give you at this uh, the very juncture uh, could be that of um, a manufacturer who is making spark plugs for your motorbikes and for your cars and for generators. Now this manufacturer may like to get into other accessories of uh, the cars and motorbikes like uh, rear view mirrors, like uh, filters, like uh, the wipers and so many different kinds of accessories. If he does so, he is going to uh, take his brand into new areas full of with, with full energy and zeal and this is what I meant by keeping the brand up to date and uh, by having a broad vision uh, or by not having a narrow vision to the point that uh, we can, cannot take up a brand into the future with a lot of energy. At the same time, the brands should not be broad-minded enough to venture into those areas which are miles and miles apart. And again, to give you the example of the manufacturer of spark plugs, just think of this manufacturer getting into foods. Now, there are examples of, of, of the distance between the two markets of the one particular the business house, but then you've got to undertake a very careful study of the new market where you are venturing into. You cannot be too narrow-minded and you should not be too broad-minded. You must try to maintain a balance in order to provide your brand or your brand's full opportunity to extend themselves in areas where they really belong. Another uh, the factor which you must consider in addition to the deliberations of the, that I was talking about is uh, awareness and uh, the reputation of uh, the company or the business. If you are a business house about which awareness is at a very high level and you also have a good reputation, then extending your brand into areas which may be new to you it may not be a bad idea. But then again, you've got to be very careful about uh, defining your uh, overall business. 
and then looking at the dynamics of uh, the situation in its competitive uh, posture. If uh, competitors are too strong and uh, that are too well entrenched into the category, you may not like to get into that category. But then basically it is a question of awareness and reputation of your business uh, that what I am talking about. And uh, if you have those two factors to your favor, you are logically all set to go for brand extensions. There are examples which uh, might uh, talk uh, of situations otherwise, um, like uh, one of the largest uh, the blue jeans the making companies that are getting into the area of um, uh, comfortable uh, formal clothing and failing there. So, you know, this can be argued by the marketing people and by those who are not even related to marketing. Uh, what happened uh, with that company? Because they that got into something which was very closely related and um, they had a very, very high level of awareness and reputation, one of the greatest in the world. Then what went wrong? This could be a very interesting case study, uh, which is not the topic of discussion at this moment. But generally speaking, awareness and reputation do uh, come to your favor but when it uh, is a question of uh, considering whether or not we should go for brand extensions. Another um, uh, factor that uh, you must keep in mind is the essence uh, and what that means is that essence of your business should be very much applicable to the extensions that you are uh, trying to create. Line extensions or uh, the brand extensions. Example. One of the largest companies that is into uh, the manufacture of uh, different kinds of uh, disposable items like you know, ballpoint pens and uh, disposable lighters and uh, with a few other items of that kind decided to get into uh, perfumes and the company failed. Now here you can say that uh, the company ventured into an area where people never thought or perceived uh, the company could get into and the company that was getting too far away from the essence uh, that offered score business or businesses it is into disposable lighters it, it is into disposable this and that and could all of a sudden getting into a market which is uh, kind of a upscale market and uh, which uh, deals with things which uh, stir your uh, emotional values and emotional relationships with those products uh, how could a manufacturer of uh, disposable items uh, get into that category notwithstanding the fact that the company had a lot of resources um, to itself? Only because the company was too far away from uh, the essence, uh, customers or uh, the prospects uh, did not uh, accept that. And uh, that is why could we keep talking about all these uh, the marketing concepts uh, being customer driven. Whatever the concept, whether we are talking about line extension or brand extension or positioning, uh, developing a brand-based customer model and um, all the, 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 the concepts that we, we talk about uh, in every lecture relate to um, customers and the market and they've got to be um, centered on customers because whatever we do is for customers and anything which uh, is away from the perceptions that the customers may have is not going to be successful in the marketplace. That is a, one of the fundamental rules of marketing. Having talked about uh, all that, I now would like to bring this lecture to a close and uh, to give you a recap of uh, what we have uh, learned today. There are uh, factors which uh, we did consider uh, as the positive side of brand extension. Uh, but then we went on to um, learning what is it that uh, really makes it possible for us to extend the brand and uh, we looked into the components of positioning and uh, we also talked about um, changing the overall positioning while we are dealing with uh, the brand extension per se, uh, not loosely. And um, then could we talked about uh, the certain strategic deliberations which we must undertake um, before deciding when to go for the brand extensions 
And in relation to that, I also started talking about a few factors which we must consider uh, before uh, getting into extensions. Uh, the last one being uh, the essence of uh, the business. There are uh, a few more factors which uh, I'm going to discuss in the next lecture. And um, for the time being, uh, I'm going to bring this to a finish uh, because of uh, the shortage of time. So I will look forward to talking with you in the next lecture. Allah Hafiz, until that time.